All right, I got a great bona fide jerry lick for you today. This one comes off of China Cat Sunflower from the Europe 72 album. The reason why I chose this lick, and this is the uh, second instrumental break between the verses, I was listening to a bunch of Dead from 72 and noticed that during this time period in this tour that Jerry had a very distinctive vibrato and bending technique going on. And um, you hear it throughout the whole period and the whole tour, and I thought it was really cool. And this lick gave a great example of it. And um, one reason why they gave this tone and the sound such a distinct flavor was that Jerry was playing Stratocasters a lot during this period. He had his alligator guitar and some other strats, and that's part of the sound. And the other is mostly it's just his technique, but the guitar definitely contributed to the sound. So um, I decided to do this whole lick. At first I was thinking about truncating it a little because it is a big lick or a long lick, but uh, it was such a cool and cohesive solo that I decided that I just had to show you the whole thing. And for those of you who are, this might be a lot for, you can just um, break it down into bite-sized pieces and learn a little bit at a time. Because like I said, I could have just taught a little bit of it and it would have been a great lick, but I thought the whole thing was even better. So what we have going on here is the little instrumental break between the China Cat verses consists of four bars of G major, and then we have four bars of D, but the fourth bar is a bar of 2-4, then we go back to 4-4 four, four and we have a half a bar of C and a half a bar of D. All right, so over this lick, um, I'll break it down for you in a moment, but it, it's, Besides the vibrato and the bending technique, it's very illustrative of how uh, Jerry plays over chord changes. Although these chords are diatonic, meaning they belong to the same key, G major, you do have a one chord and a five chord, and then at the very end, four to five. But over the uh, G chord and the D chord, you hear over, G over the G chord, Jerry's playing notes, and it sounds like he's playing over G. Now when he goes to the five chord D, it sounds like he's playing over D. And I think that's one thing for uh, people, for guitarists that are starting out and trying to play over diacon diatonic chord changes or chords that all come from the same key, they have a hard time of making the changes or making it sound like they're playing over different chords. Because you start playing over G major, all the notes from G major, and it just sounds like you're playing a G major scale and kind of skating over the uh, changes, just, you know, sliding over the chords. And that's not what Jerry does. I mean, you could play this solo without the chords, and you hear him starting off over G, then you hear him playing over D. And for those of you who are trying to learn the modes, I mean, this is a great lick to really digest because over the G, it sounds like G major. Over the D, it sounds like D mixolydian. And getting this lick under your fingers and learning how to really target certain notes and put the emphasis on certain notes, you can see that even though you're playing over the same, the chords that come from the same key and using the same note pool or notes from G major, it sounds like you're playing over the specific chord that you're playing over. All right, enough of that. Without further ado, let's break down this lick. All right, it starts off in 12th position, and instead of starting on a chord tone, Jerry starts on the flat third, B flat, which is the 13th fret of the fifth string, and then he plays a B natural, 14th fret of the fifth string. Here's the first lick. All right, so we start on the 13th fret to 14th fret of 5th string, so B flat to B. And that B is the third of the G chord. Then we play 12 to 14 on D. So that's a D, which is the fifth of the G chord. Then we have E. Then we play 12th fret of the third string, the root. So we have... 
Then we go back to the 12 to 14 on the fourth string, 12 to 14 on the third string, and 12th fret of the second string. So again, we've got the uh, fifth, then we have the root, and then we have the third. So those are all very strong chord tones out of the G triad. All right, we play 14th fret of the third string, 12th fret of the second string, then 14th fret of the, so 14th fret of the third string, 12th fret of the second string, 14th fret of the first string, bend up a half step. So that's part of what gives that bend and vibrato such a distinct flavor is he's bending up a half step. All right, so right here we have. Fourteenth bed up a half step. Then fifteen to twelve on the second string. Then we play the twelfth fret of the third string. So let's play those first two measures. So let's take a look at the uh, next lick. We're bending up again from 14th to the 15th fret, bending up a half step. So then we uh, play the D, D, which is the 15th fret of the second string twice. And that gives us a chance to switch uh, position so we have and then we have 15 on the first string 17 pulled off to 15 on the second string and 16 on the third string then we have 15 hammer on to 17 on the second string 15 and then we have 17th fret, which is a C on the third string. And then we're pre-bending the 14th fret up a whole step on the third string, releasing, pulling off to the 12th fret. Then we play 14 on the fourth string, 12, 14, 12, 11 on the third. And that F sharp anticipates the chord change to the D, which the F sharp is the third of D. So we have. And then to maintain the sound of a D chord, we're playing the root. So D or 12th fret of the fourth string. Then 11 with the 11th fret of the third string, F sharp, 12 to 14. We have that A, which is the fifth of D. So we have. So here we have 13th fret of the second string, 12th fret of the third string, back to 13th fret of the second string. And notice that. That comes out of that D7 shape, so we're playing the 5th, flat 7, 5th of a D chord. Then we have this. So on the 2nd string, uh, it's 12, 13, 12. Then we have A, the 5th of a D chord on the 14th fret of the 3rd string. We play a chromatic neighbor tone, back to 14. Then on the second string, 12, 13. Then we have this pull off hammer on. So it's 15, 13, 12, pulled off on the second string. And then hammer back onto 13. Then we have the 14th fret of the third string, 13th fret of the second string, 
12th fret of the first string, and then 15 to 12 pulled off on the first string. So notice right there that that's an A minor arpeggio, which comes out of the G major scale or D mixolydian mode. And arpeggios are a great, great way to break up, just scale your ideas. All right, so we have So that's 13th fret of the second string, 12th fret of the first string. Do that again, then 14th fret of the first string. Then we bend the 12th fret up to the a whole step on the first string. Again, uh, Jerry's vibrato. We release, play the 10th fret twice. Now over that bar of 2-4, we have this. So in 8th position, we have the 8th fret of the 1st string, 10th fret of the 2nd, 8th fret of the 1st string, 10th fret of the 1st string. Then we bend that a whole step, release, pull off to the 8th fret, and play the 10th fret of the 2nd string. the C chord, we play C, 8th fret of the 1st string, that's the root, then over the D chord we play D, 10th fret of the 1st string, and that's the root of that chord. So from the 12th fret of the 3rd string we have I hope you enjoyed that lick as much as I did. Alright, see you next time.